On May 12, 1958, the governments of Canada and the United States acknowledged the indivisibility of North American air defense with the creation of NORAD. The mission of NORAD is to maintain an integrated defense of the North American continent against aerospace attack. Ontario is the headquarters of Air Defense Command, one of the Canadian Armed Forces' functional commands. North Bay is also headquarters for the 22nd NORAD region. Situated more than 600 feet below ground is the SAGE, Semi-Automatic Ground Environment Control System. Here, the two billion year old solid granite has been hollowed out to make room for a three-story complex which houses two giant computers and the offices and life support systems which allow for self-sustenance if the need arises there is 10,000 feet of tunneling. Underground excavation of SAGE began in 1959 and was completed four years and 300,000 yards of cubic rock later. This unique center is one of Canada's major contributions to NORAD. The subterranean invulnerability and strategic location make it a vital center of operations in the network of communication and defense for North America. Sink NORAD has so structured his command as to divide the continent into eight geographical areas for the air defense of Canada and the United States. Regions within NORAD have forces from Canadian Forces Air Defense Command in their support. That is the 21st region, the 22nd region, the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th. Now I should refer a little more specifically to the 22nd since this encompasses some 2 million square miles of Canadian airspace. All of the forces within the 22nd NORAD region our Canadian forces, with the exception of one radar unit provided by the United States Air Force in Maine. The 22nd is the largest of eight NORAD regions. Within its boundaries are sections of the 10 provinces, the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and the state of Maine. This enables the commander of 22nd NORAD region, in cooperation with other NORAD forces, to interdict all polar air routes leading to the vital industrial centers of urban North America. Although only one-eighth of the whole, 22nd NORAD is responsible for two million square miles, or one-fifth of the North American continent. Barring a direct hit by more than one nuclear device, the SAGE center is invulnerable. If attacked, there are kitchen and dining facilities for 400 personnel, a hospital and infirmary, and a well-equipped canteen. There are also washrooms and showers, as well as the needed space to allow for rest and sleep. The underground generators would switch to stored fuel at a certain alert state. SAGE maintains two of the world's largest computers in continuous operation. They have the capability of 80 mathematical problems a second, and are used to sift through the constant flow of radar sightings to establish the nature and incidence of aircraft activity. The first indication of uh, an intruder penetrating into our airspace would probably come through the distant early warning line. The distant early warning lines extends from Alaska 
across the northern part of Canada, Greenland, through to the United Kingdom. We in Canada are responsible for the four main distant early warning sites in the Canadian Arctic. We would then pick up the unknown aircraft within our pine tree radar line, which is situated somewhat south of the distant early warning line. Canada provides 28 radars distributed across the uh, breadth of Canada from Holberg on Vancouver Island to Gander in Newfoundland. These radars are situated some 200 miles apart across the country. In addition to these 28 radars, we also provide three CF-101 fighter squadrons, a number of training aircraft, all of which are given to St. Norad to assist him in the defense of the continent. Three squadrons of CF-101 Voodoo's have the task of maintaining sovereignty. The combat-ready interceptors have a conventional or nuclear capability and are ideal as a defense against bomber attacks combining long range and speeds up to 1,200 miles per hour with a computerized control system, the underground SAGE Center. Flying in pairs, their task is to identify radar sightings of unknown aircraft. Aircraft activity over North America is pinpointed by strategically located radar sites and matched through the computers with the thousands of flight plans which are filed daily. If an aircraft presence does not match a flight plan, an attempt is made to establish radio communication for immediate identification. If this fails, the voodoos are scrambled for a positive visual check. The squadrons reach the demanding standard of professionalism Air Defense Command needs through a comprehensive exercise program and the exigencies of their daily work. In this instance, a T-33 jet trainer has been intruded by North Bay over 22nd NORAD region airspace. 425 Squadron in Bagotville, Quebec is alerted and asked for an identification. Within five minutes, two interceptors have scrambled. Within 20 minutes, a contact report is back to the headquarters reporting a T-33 proceeding northeast at an altitude of 35,000 feet. The lead interceptor goes in separately to make the visual contact. If the T-33 had proved hostile, the second 101 was in position to take appropriate action. The job done, the CF-101s return home. The T-33 will conclude his role as an attacking force on his return to the Electronics Warfare Squadron, which is also located in North Bay. CF-100 electronic countermeasures aircraft are also exercised as part of a simulated target to provide training for the manned interceptors and ground radar systems. Canada's first military priority is to maintain her sovereignty. This is a continually demonstrated fact within all the commands of the Canadian Armed Forces. Air Defence Command can point with pride to over two decades of faultless service as proof that the men and women of ADC are second to none. Thank you.